People always ask, what is it that makes Pater Payroll so easy to use? In other videos covering the production of payroll and working within a batch, we looked at the production process and how you can manage it, controlling calculated values and entered values. In this video, we're going to go through the completion of the batch and look at how you might manage some problems that could occur at the tail end and how the payment production actually happens. To do that, we need to open up a batch, and this is the batch that we were working on in our previous sessions, and it has time entered for each of these employees. Remember, I can scroll through the employees in the batch just by staying on the keyboard, and when I get to the end, I can see that they all have time entered, so I'll just go to the Checks tab. Going to the Checks tab triggers a process whereby the program checks to see if everybody has been calculated. And as you can see, only two of these employees have been calculated. That is, their government deductions have been determined, and other employees haven't. Um, so we'll click the OK button, and the program will determine the government deductions and all other calculated values for the employees at that stage. And at this point, we're ready to complete the pay run. Um, and to complete the pay run, we need to print checks and create a direct deposit file. You can see that these employees have been assigned either to be paid by check or by direct deposit. And before we do that, though, you can see that we can't post the batch until that process is done. We can't tr uh, print direct deposit advices. And of course, we can't actually look at the direct deposit file. So in order to print checks and do the direct deposits, we need to verify that the starting check number is correct. And then just click the Do Checks Plus Direct Deposits button. The program prompts us and then proceeds to create the direct deposit file and advises us the name of the file and the amount that's contained in it needs to be sent to the bank. And when I click OK, the program then proceeds to actually print the two checks for the two employees. Now these checks are, are printed with the two advices at the top and then the check at the bottom. And in this case I've put the check production up on screen, but in your scenarios, you would of course send those directly to the printer. And once I've completed the printing of checks, then you'll notice that there's two new columns on screen. One says OK and one says Redo. And at this point, the Post Batch button is now live, so is the View Direct Deposit file, and so is the Printing of Direct Deposit Advices button live. And I can also see that everybody's marked as OK, and of course these buttons wouldn't be live if everybody wasn't marked as OK. So at this point, we're pretty much done. If we wanted to, we could post the batch. We could do any of those elements there. But if, for example, somebody, a, a manager advised you that one of those checks needed to be changed or some element needed to be changed, we could do that. At this point, if I go back to pay cards, you'll see that there's no blank row at the bottom for adding a, an extra pay code. And if I try to move into the area to do an entry, the program just skips me right over the top only leaves me in the accounting fields. And I can't edit e any of these employees. Everything is in a frozen state. But if I set one of those employees back to OK, for example, if a manager advised me to make a change or if an employee rushed in and said, oh, I forgot I worked on Friday and I want to be paid those hours, the program will allow me to do that. It won't allow me to change them back to from redo to OK. I'll have to actually produce a reproduce their payment. So at this stage, I can go back to pay cards, and it knows which employee I was looking at. You can see there is a blank row. If I want to add another wage pay code or any pay code to this, I can. If I want to record the missing time that was requested, I can do that too. And when I go to the Checks tab now, the program notices that this one employee hasn't been uh, completed, hasn't been calculated and offers to do that. And all I need to do at this stage is to click the Do Checks Plus Direct Deposit button. Notice that because this one employee is in a redo status, I can't post the batch and I can't print direct deposit advices. This also could be helpful if, for example, you had the printer malfunction while you were printing checks or, or if the computer crashed right while you were doing payments or for any other reason that would cause you to have to fix or correct any employee, or perhaps even all of the employees. You could, if you wish, choose to redo all of them. But in this case, uh, we're just redoing the one. 
So let's go ahead and produce the check for this employee. You'll notice that it does recreate the direct deposit file just in case some element changed there. We just have one employee receiving a check, so we have a check printed for that employee. And when we're um, finished with that, everybody's back in a redo status, and now I can post this batch again, and I can print direct deposit devices. So that gives you complete control over the production process, even if you have a problem during printing or if things need to be changed last second. And hopefully you will find that helpful.